Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today, we are so excited to bring you the ultimate Dell Optiplex. We're gonna be building, well, building a Dell Optiplex. Basically, we're gonna be doing some modifications, add some RGB, a custom side panel, and slap in the new RX 6600 GPU into a Dell Optiplex. Will it be cool? I think it will be. But before we dive into this, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their new Z690 Tai Chi motherboard featuring support for the latest 12th gen Intel processors, a 20 phase power design making this board perfect for any 12th gen CPU, and it's also DDR5 ready with reinforced DIMM slots and loads of I.O. like Thunderbolt 4, making it great for gamers and content creators like myself. If you're looking to build an awesome 12th gen Intel gaming or workstation PC, then you should look no further than the Z690 Tai Chi from ASRock. Check the link down below to learn more, and special thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get into the video, shall we? So obviously, this stuff right here is all brand new components that have, for the most part, just dropped. They're very nice components that you would put inside of a normal gaming PC. Well, this is not quite that. We have a mid-tower Dell Optiplex here that has 16 gigs of RAM and it's four sticks. It has an i7-3770 and it even came with a 240 gig SSD. We basically spared no expenses getting the Optiplex ready to go. You could go on eBay and for less than $100 get a very similar system that maybe has no RAM, maybe no hard drive, it still has the i7 and everything else ready to go. But for the most part, we were like, why do that and buy this stuff separate when we can have one that's just ready to go. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is talk about the upgrades we're gonna be throwing into this Optiplex Optiplex, and then we're gonna start doing the mod, figuring out the side panel situation. And uh, yeah, we'll just take you along for the ride. So let's do it. Now for the CPU cooler, which it should come with a CPU cooler, obviously, but we're gonna make it have RGB. This is the Cooler Master IC1C. Um, CPU cooler. So it has an RGB fan built in, which is totally unnecessary. But again, we're building the ultimate Optiplex and the ultimate Optiplex has RGB and it does come with that standard mounting that Optiplex is used. So it should be perfectly easy to mount this on that CPU, that 3770. Now for the power supply, of course, this is like one of the last generations where you can actually swap the power supply in an Optiplex because they use proprietary hardware in newer ones. But this power supply, a 650 watt, which is overkill, by the way, uh, this is the B5 power supply from EV GA is 80 plus bronze and will work perfectly fine in this build. Easy swap, good to go. And last but certainly not least, we have an RX 6600 from Sapphire. This is the new Budget King from AMD. And of course, we gotta slap the new Budget King in a Dell Optiplex, because we're the Toasty Bros and that's what we like to do. Um, we'll just go ahead and show you what this thing looks on the inside real quick, because we didn't really get a chance to look up close. It's a little dusty, it's gonna need some love. It actually came with a graphics card and as you see, all 16 gigs of RAM ready to go there. The SSD and everything, this power supply is gonna go. But if you were just to pick up an Optiplex um, and want to slap in a like 1050 or 1050 Ti, you keep the same power supply. Um, we've do, done numerous videos on that. But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into planning on how we're gonna do this side panel. All right, so what we are doing now is we're just getting nice and set up. We have this wonderful mod room. It's the first mod we've even done here. We've been here for like eight months. But the idea is we're going to basically gut this whole entire thing because we're gonna be doing some painting. We actually got our colors picked out here. Uh, you know, we had some other ideas, but we couldn't find them. So instead we decided to get this hammered black finish, which should look something like that. It looks pretty cool to us. And then we're gonna do some uh, clear coat over top of this to try to keep it as, um, you know, bulletproof as possible. We don't want it scratching off uh, at the slightest scratch. So we're gonna take out the power supply, uh, the DVD drive, the probably the SSD, and then just the whole entire motherboard and everything. Put that off to the side because we are going to be uh, sanding this case, we're going to be painting it, we're also going to cut the side panel which we have measured out and went ahead and got ourselves a nice angle grinder to do that. So this should be all pretty easy, right? Let's get it. Okay guys, we have the PC all taken apart. Um, figure what graphics card that was. It looks like an AMD Oh, it's a Radiant, card. yeah. It's probably like a 5450 or something like that. Yeah, something so. fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so what are we gonna do next? Well, next we're basically going to take our angle grinder and we're going to cut this traced square right here, rectangle. And then after that, well, not in this order, but this is the piece of acrylic we're gonna be putting on. It just barely overlaps the cut. So we'll be able to glue that down. You won't see any like really ugly edges. But before we glue that panel on, uh, we're gonna cut this out and then we're going to basically take our sandpaper here 
Uh, we're going to scuff up the whole case, make it to where the paint has something to stick to. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and start painting. It's gonna take a few different layers. There's probably gonna be some spots we need to paint over a couple times to make sure that everything covers well, but we're excited. Look at that. That's a thin, that's a flimsy panel now. All right, base coat time. Yeah, that stuff goes on thick. There she goes. Base coat number one. All right guys, so we have gotten the case nice and painted. It actually turned out really nice looking. Depending on like the way the light's hitting it, you get like a really insane amount of sparkle or you just get like a nice gl uh, gloss black look depending on how you look at it. So definitely a fun like obsidian type look. Uh, we even painted the inside. Not very well, really. I mean, it's gonna be covered with the motherboard and that side panel is only going to show about this area like a right about here pretty much so you're not going to see like the hard drive kit or sorry the dvd drive cage you will see a little bit of the hard drive cage you're not going to see like the very bottom of the case um next thing on the list though is oh one other thing too that i wanted to address is i know that we spray painted with the usb and like the audio ports open that was just us being stupid um, honestly just taking a usb thumb drive just pushing in and out a few times should clear up the uh, copper traces and those should just work fine. If not, you know, it's an old lobby flex, who cares? But we got our side panel cut and everything. It's not the cleanest cut in the world, but you know, once again, Optiplex didn't really feel like spending uh, hours on filing it. So we're gonna take our panel here once our hot glue gun heats up and then it actually fits in there like perfectly. Um, and then we're just gonna kind of glue around the edges so that it's hidden and you don't see like a bunch of uh, glue bleeding over anything. And I think we're just about ready to do that. Let's go. Oh. The only part that does suck too is I got a little bit of the cut. Oh, actually, I think we're good. I think that's pretty good. See right there, it's like almost <coughs> over the edge. Are we hot, locked, and loaded? I think we're hot, locked, and loaded, man. Let's, let's find out. Looks pretty good. This looks pretty solid, actually. Um, I'm not gonna like push in the panel yet because the hot glue is kind of still drying, but as you can see, we got a pretty nice coat all the way around. I wasn't really able to do the bottom edges, uh, but I think this is gonna work out pretty well. Hopefully the the paneling isn't isn't too non-porous so that we don't have the glue not sticking to it, but. I think it seems pretty good. Yeah, so all we have to do now is put this PC back together, mm -hmm. uh, wait for everything to dry, and then we'll have a good idea of how this thing has turned out. I think for an Optiplex mod, looks pretty good. Let's wait for this to click on and see if it all Ooh, looks all right. It clicks. Nice. All that's, right. That's pretty good. Yeah, so we'll have a, like a nice, nice view of the graphics card, um, the CPU cooler. We'll have like an RGB strip, and we could even install it. Like, we'll probably put it up top, yeah. so we don't have to worry about the panel coming off with it, but pretty all right, cool. We'll do it.
right, guys, now that we have this ultimate Dell Optiplex all booted up and ready to go, let's dive into some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Apex Legends, Back for Blood, Borderlands 3, and Split Gate. Now, right out of the gate, I just want to re emphasize here yes, there is going to be some bottlenecking with that i7, 3770, and RX 6600. And yes, you could probably build a PC with the 6600 and have a much better experience for a little bit more money. This is just for fun, guys. Don't don't go in the comments and be like, this is so stupid, why would you do this? We're doing this just to try something crazy. We love Dell Optiplexes, we wanted to max one out, and I think we did a pretty good job here. And as you can see in Apex Legends on medium high settings, that bottlenecking ain't too bad with the RX 6600 getting 140 plus FPS. I would say in esports titles, if you're running medium high settings, you wouldn't have any problem because you're leaning much more on the GPU. That doesn't mean the i7-3770 is a slouch, it can still play most esports titles at 100 plus FPS and you could have a good high refresh rate gaming experience, but in a game like Apex Legends, it's much more demanding on the graphics card, so you're not really getting that, well, bottlenecking that happens with a 3770 if you're running on low, low settings. So getting 144 FPS, I think, on out of a CPU and a GPU that really shouldn't be paired together, um, I think is actually pretty impressive. Now, next up in Back for Blood, which is a newer game that we've been playing here at the office recently, um, I tested this with FSR and non-FSR so we can get a different result here to see if FSR actually helps with some bottlenecking issues. Um, with non-FSR, we started to see a lot of bottlenecking, uh, getting about 60 FPS, but a lot of dips below 60. Um, we ran with that for a little bit, but it was a little bit stuttery. Not a great gaming experience, but it's acceptable. And then we decided to enable FSR, which for those who don't know, is AMD's super resolution, which allows you to basically do the same thing that um, DLSS does for NVIDIA, but for AMD and upscale from a lower resolution so you can actually get more performance while not actually lowering the resolution. And we end up getting 70 plus FPS, which is pretty impressive still. Um, it's not nearly as good. If you want to see a comparison of the 6600 and see how bad this is actually being bottlenecked, we actually did a video of a Micro Center PC with a 6600 and an 11700K. And in Back for Blood, we were getting about 100 FPS. So that's something to keep in mind. That's about a 30 FPS difference, but we are talking about third gen i7 all the way up to 11th gen. So yeah, that's kind of expected. Next up in Borderlands 3, we start to see a little bit more bottlenecking here at medium settings at 1080p we average 72 fps compared to the 11700k build that got 118 again that's a lot of fps numbers you're throwing out there but i mean it still works but being able to use a dell optiplex from 10 plus years ago and just slap in a gpu upgrade the power supply and be able to play the latest AAA titles at medium settings is still very impressive and last but certainly not least is split gate at 1080p on max settings we got 200 plus fps um it was still a little bit stuttery though this is where like an older i7 with older ipc is going to cause some issues especially in esports titles when you're getting to the super high fps numbers you could easily lock it to like 144 and have a very smooth experience but when you start seeing that 200 300 fps that cpu cannot handle all those frames so when that happens you start experiencing stutters and a not so great gaming experience but in recap, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think it looks really good. Obviously, there are way better modders out there, but we like to do some mods every so often, and we absolutely love Dell Optiplexes. We do a lot of stuff with them, and we're really excited that we can do a mod to make one look the best it possibly can, and I think this turned out pretty good. So let me know down below what you all think, and uh, yeah, let's bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so in conclusion, this PC not only performs really well, but we like to think that we've given it kind of a new life. It definitely looks a heck of a lot better. And technically, this thing has a little bit of an upgrade path to it, but not much. That i7 is probably as high as you're going to be able to upgrade on this Optiplex, but that 6600 and i7 do work pretty well together. Some slight bottlenecking in newer games, but for the most part, it does work. Um, so if you want to pick anything up for today's videos, link in the description down below will be affiliate links, and it will help us out. Obviously, you're going to have to do the whole mod yourself. You can't buy this as is, but you can buy an Optiplex from eBay or if you want to buy from a PC selling business, PC Rose, you most certainly can. Um, and you can do the mod and also slap in whatever GPU you want. So yeah, this is kind of a fun thing to do to pay respect to our favorite Optiplex that is very upgradable. And obviously you could go out and just buy a nice case and build a whole new PC and you'll probably be able to do it for not a whole lot more than we spend here. But you do have to remember this whole entire Optiplex came working. It even came with a cheap graphics card and we paid around $200 for it. So at the end of the day, for just a couple hundred dollars, you can end up with a PC like this, especially if you have spray paint and you have an angle grinder or some type of saw at home and then just slap in a graphics card of choice. And these usually make for great gaming PCs.
So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toaster Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So Matt mentioned buying a PC like this earlier, but did you know you could buy this exact PC? If you're watching this video right now, this PC is probably gone, but you can go to PCBros.Tech and it might be there. Our PC selling business, PCBros.Tech, link down below. See you guys later, goodbye. You guys want more of these? Should we keep doing them? Yeah, make more. More. more.